Well, welcome to the review segment of our show. Joseph Akablaze here. We've already started analyzing uh, the issue with uh, the late Professor Emmanuel Yao Bene. His body was discovered over the weekend and uh, uh, we're told at least the beginning of this whole uh, story was uh, because of a colleague at the Faculty of Law at the University of Ghana who had uh, posted on Facebook uh, about the discovery uh, of the dead body of the professor. Uh, and we're just putting one or two together. We'll let you in on what we've been talking about. Joseph, good morning. Good morning, Mavi. How are you yeah. doing? Very well. Yourself? I'm great. It's good to see you again. Yeah, you too, definitely. But uh, this issue of Professor Yaobene, I mean, listening to it on Saturday, really unbelievable. So not like the Ghana that we know. But then again, there's been incident of this nature. Once in a while, it occurs. And I guess what is disheartening is the fact that we don't get closure and we usually don't get justice. It gets all of us worried that somebody will be discovered in their home in the manner that he was. Very unfortunate. And the details that uh, we have been made aware of, uh, his hands and legs tied. I mean, I, I struggle to see, you know, when you see the image of the individual and what those who know him say, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't help but wonder, especially when uh, there's no even sign that there has been a robbery at the home. And so it, it, it's very, very troubling. And I mean, as, as you were saying, uh, all what we, we need is closure. I mean, to understand what exactly happened while most of us were asleep and to know that he had actually died for close to 48 hours mm -hmm. uh, before it was discovered it makes it equally troubling. And I yeah. can imagine at the state the family uh, will be in to just be home and pick news that this is the manner by which your father or your uncle has been murdered. I mean, it's very worrying. Absolutely. We'll tell you what the newspapers are reporting, but uh, we will also be talking about it here on the AM show. It's one of our many conversations today. So let's just start with the Ghanaian Times newspaper. The story is on the front page of the paper, what we've been talking about. Four domestic workers arrested over Professor Bennis' murder. Uh, also four local fraudsters napped in the Western region. 531,705 candidates begin BECU today. 15 heads of states arrive in Accra today to discuss happenings in Mali. Uh, they will be going to the Pediatric Lodge tomorrow. So we will be telling you when we get on myjournline.com some roads that will get really busy tomorrow. You'll have to get a plan B if that's your usual route because we have about eight heads of state, something of the sort who will be coming to Ghana. Remember, our president is the chairman of ECOWAS. So we're hosting these heads of state. And the main discussion is around Mali. Uh, back on the front page, flats, Bakary Dam, spillage fallout. Canoes ferry 210 BC students in Samboba to write exams at various centers. Uh, and But for the BEC, we probably would not have linked the disaster, the destruction, uh, what the flats are causing in Saboba to so this. Now you can really relate and, and imagine how this is impacting daily lives, even in the lives of children, our young people. We haven't started the conversation about the farms and the homes that have been destroyed. But just look at how children who are sitting for BEC, there are many others in the country who are not going to be doing that. But they will be ferried because of the spillage, the flats subsequently. The small on page 12. Uh, but let's go to the back page of the paper. 37 business resource centers working. Over 9,000 stranded Ghanaians evacuated home. It says that this number of Ghanaians, the 9,000, uh, and resident permit holders stranded abroad were evacuated into the country during the five months that the nation's airspace was closed to commercial flights to contain the spread of the coronavirus disease. President Kufuado announced the closure of the country's borders effective March 22. So story essentially is, begin, is given a background uh, to why these Ghanaians were stranded uh, and all about the other countries that we close our borders to. But over 9,000 have been able to come back home safely after we opened the, the Kutuka International Airport. 
In the center spread, robbers attack a bullion van, kill one, injured two cops. Tension mounts in Karaga over installation of new chief. GRA on course to achieve 42.7 billion revenue target for 2020. It's also another story. And then details of the 15. Oh, so it's not, it's more than eight 15 heads of states arrive in Accra today to discuss happenings in Mali. All right, uh, let's go to page three where they usually have the uh, crime stories, the updates on the law professor. At least four persons have been arrested in connection with the murder of the law lecturer, Professor Emmanuel Albene, at his residence at Ajiringan or in East Legon in Accra. The suspect are uh, a cleaner, houseboy, uh, another cleaner, and a gardener. The suspects were arrested yesterday for interrogation are all domestic workers of the deceased. PRO of the Ghana Police Service, the Greater Accra Region, disclosed this to the Ghanaian Times, and she said the Regional Police Commander Command has taken over the case. The deceased was found lying dead in a pool of blood with some cuts on the body. Uh, the body has since been sent to the ho police hospital mortuary, but you know, we have more to talk about later in our show. And then five persons, including one woman, perished in a gory accident involving three cars and a motorcycle at Petoy in the Volta region on Saturday. The incident occurred at about 3.30 p.m. at Young Farmers, a spot near the Agotimo, uh, Agotima Zyopé Assembly office building when a Toyota hiring car uh, moving towards the upflower direction, was overtaking a vehicle in front of it and in the process rammed into an unregistered unregist Toyota Camry from the opposite direction. So you'd find the gory pictures uh, along with the story on page three. And then the National Lottery Authority, in collaboration with the Volta Regional Police Command, have arrested four Lotto fraudsters in the Volta region. The alleged photo, uh, Lotto fraudsters their names and ages so not between 19 and 21 years essentially uh, they operated from akachi and ho according to the police sources so it gives you background to what the circuit court did in this case and what's happening to them the update is all in the ghanaian times newspaper let's do a second paper which is the daily graphic newspaper on the front page ECOWAS meets at pediasi tomorrow COVID-19 support to private schools, NBSSI disperses 50 million Ghana cities, Bridget Jogwenuku leads the PPP, Safeguard 2020 BC questioning papers. That's a, a call coming from the National Association of Teachers. In the center spread, there is a news feature, Premix Fuel enhances living standards in fishing communities. That's what the feature is about on the back page. President inaugurate project in Ahafo and one killed in bullion van attack. Seven suspected armed robbers attacked a bullion van belonging to the uh, Agates Mabot Security Company Limited last Friday, killing the cashier on the spot and injuring the driver and two policemen on board the vehicle. The robbers made away with two metal boxes said to contain unspecified cash meant for distribution to banks around Kumasi, and two AK-47 rifles belonging to the police in the Broad Daylight Act. The armed, ro uh, armed men, four of them in masks, attacked the van near Manso Mem in the Amansia West District of the Ashanti region. Amid indiscriminate shooting, the robbers left the cashier, identified only as Atakra 35 dead from gunshot wounds. The armed men also seized the two policemen's AK-47 rifles loaded with 30 rounds of ammunition each. That sounds like a movie, doesn't it? Hmm. All right, Joseph, that's it for the graphic. Uh, let's see the paper that you're, you're I have doing a daily now. guide. Uh, the front page uh, has the story. Our manifesto is a contract. It's coming from President Akufuado. Hey, so enforceable? <laughs> That is if uh, consideration has been exchanged. <laughs> I'm not too sure about nice. that. This is a contract. Yeah. Top Legon lecturer brutally killed, four arrested also on the front page. NPP's Reverend Asante entry dies, and robbers kill bank cashier escape 
with boxes of cash. And winning by NPP balls over planned award also on the front page of the Daily Guide. Uh, the back page has some news uh, sports, sports related about the captaincy at the Black Stars. CK O'Connor retains Andre Ayew as Black Stars captain. Mbappe puts Real City on alert and COVID-19 strikes Simone, uh, the Atletico Madrid coach. And calf bears teeth at teams that failed MRI test also on the back page. Kotoko adopt a cross sports stadium for Champions League also on the back page of the Daily Guide. Uh, we can do... Uh, you know, you page. didn't tell me about your CEO's situation last Friday. You kind of just dodged it. Has he resigned? He's still at post. Uh, ah, I'm sure okay. if he resigned, it will be the first news that Oreko will bring us later on. And I'm wondering why... But you are, are the board you are members still undermining his, his leadership? I think Kumasi Asantikotko, first and foremost, is a football club. It's not a management consultancy. <laughs> And so we focus on delivering results. And so, that's you, why so you don't have a board? The good news here is that we are participating in the Champions League shortly. The, the, the board issues, the football fans are not you interested. Know, you can cover it up with, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. But what is beneath, which is uh, what holds everything together, will come crumbling. There's a House of Folk story. You want us to review it? Is it the bus? No, Togba Afede. I mean, he's talking about the fact that he took Liverpool 30 years to win a trophy. You know he's. Is, the, it, he's is the, it is it factual? It's factual. You know uh -huh. he's the majority shareholder of Hearts of Oak. Yes, I yeah. know. So he's saying that his target is thirty years. <laughs> and so I guess the Hearts of Oak fans would have to wait. You know that's not true. Longer. You just twisted his words right there. Well, the center spread uh, has the story that we told our viewers about last week about the uh, the Ghanaian prophet uh, mm. who killed allegedly killed a wife. Uh, that story is here. We are told that it has appeared in court. The trial uh, has commenced, and uh, the prosecutors told. Uh, the court that there is CCTV footage of the crime as we had uh, put that out also. And so portions of it here says um, the video of the heated argument too, which has also gone viral. Uh, we spoke about that. The as one well. with the with the brother we're told that's yeah. in the the late wife's brother right. yeah. where he actually threatened to kill her. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. so the story here says he has been charged uh, with first degree murder and risk life imprisonment without parole for the offense if found guilty. And so uh, that is the update of that story has already been taken mm. to the court. Uh, there is this other crime story I saw here on page six. It's about robbers kill bank cashier and escape mm. with boxes of cash. We are told that some trigger happy robbers are currently on the run after they ambushed the bullion van in broad daylight mm. and killed a 35 year old bank cashier before escaping with two big boxes containing unspecified amounts hmm. of money. Uh, they injured the two occupants, including a policeman, during uh, the robbery. And so, very unfortunate one here. Uh, then there's that story about uh, Professor Bene. Uh, there are portions of it here that uh, the Daily Guide brings. Uh, it talks about the houseboy. Uh, they said when the body was discovered, Isaac Butcher, the houseboy of the slain law professor, whose expertise is in international law, he spoke to... He said he spoke to his master at about 8 p.m. last Thursday, September 10. The houseboy said he lived in Accra Central and his master usually called him whenever he needed his services. He said he called the late professor on Friday morning, but he did not respond, so he thought his master had gone out. Uh, he goes on to say that the gardener came to work on Saturday, and when he did not find any sign of him, he knocked at his door, but there was no response. Uh, he said the gardener then went to inform the professor's sister who lives a few meters away from the house about her brother's disappearance. This was on Friday or this Saturday? This was on Saturday morning when okay. the gardener had come into work. Uh, together with her, they got a carpenter to force the door open and found Professor Bennett dead with his hands and leg tied, lying in a pool of blood between his bedroom and living room. He claimed the gardener has some of the keys to the main entrance to the house and he also has spare keys to the deceased room. And so, I mean, that explains why the gardener has been picked up to an extent, as a suspect for the start, also they've picked up the houseboy and two others who also are domestic workers in the house and has a photograph of the house there. Very a worrying story. And uh, Dr. Pukwudu say who we know is a law lecturer at Legon, actually put this information out mm -hmm. on social media and he was quite worried. He says folks had uh, wanted not to be the breaker of such ominous news, but the calls are incessant. The world is damn evil. Professor Yalbena of Legon Law has been murdered in JB style in his Adrian mansion. It appears to be an act perpetrated by about three days ago, but was just discovered this uh, morning. Mm. So 
And that was Saturday morning, was Saturday and, morning, and yeah. he, it brings back, as he also stated, the, uh, the late J.B. Uh, Dankwa uh, Edu. There's also the Fennec uh, that he reminded us, us of. I think there's one outstanding incident like that as well. And you wonder, when you listen to all these high-profile persons, uh, I mean, you're... You're scared, first of all, because you know that it could happen to anybody. Yeah. Uh, but you're also not confident in the system because we didn't find closure, nor did we get justice for these other persons that we mentioned. And these were all known people, yeah. like big people, like we'll say in our society. Yeah. And if it couldn't be resolved for a big person, how can it be resolved for you, a small person? Especially if you, the Fennec culture one, I mean, there's no one standing trial currently for that one. At least in a JB Danko Edu instance, we know that there are two individuals who are standing trial. But even with that one, the facts of the matter that has been put before the courts, they don't really... You know, when things like this happen, uh, when a case is sent to courts, the facts should tell a story. It should make sense. Or even if it doesn't make sense, to the, the facts should also tell that story. That I mean, why would someone go into the place? And because the, the, the point was being made about the fact that in a JB Danko instance, that the gentleman had access to a ladder that he could climb into the house with which obviously means that he, miss, he must have been assisted one way or the other. He's standing trial. We've heard him come out and say all manner of things yeah. about it being contract killing and about it being whatever it is. And yet, I mean, he's, he, those are the only two individuals standing trial. And the trial has been on for too long. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that is the bit about fighting crime to that affects confidence because people want to know that, I mean, this is the individual who has committed a crime. He's jailed and we move on with our lives. Yeah. And if you hear the the... Other law lecturers, uh, not even law, even the university community talk about uh, this professor that I guess for many other people, you're probably hearing his name for the first time. You probably heard it over the weekend. They say if you knew him and if you heard about the manner in which he was killed, it won't make sense to you at all. You have lots of questions on your mind. Lots of questions. So this are some visuals from his residence. So imagine that you live in a place like this and you're killed in, in the manner that has, it has been described, that he was found between his bedroom, you said, and the living, and room. The living room. Hands tied, legs, legs tied. tied, with some cuts yeah. on his body. And oh, this was only discovered on Saturday morning uh, as the gardener had come to, into work and he, he had not seen any sign of his master. So decided to prompt his sister, who lives as, as it has also been described, not too far from his neighborhood. I mean, this is absolutely tragic. Uh, and where, where can we find the confidence is you know, the key thing that we'll be talking about. Because I remember uh, the late member of parliament, we reported this incident just the same way that we're reporting this one. You know, and then, how many years down the line, what has been done? Oh, God. Well, let's do, we've got some other papers. Are you done with the Daily Guide? Yes, uh, so we can look at the Daily Dispatch now. The front page has a provisional 2020 voters registered 13 out of our 20 most popular seats in Greater Accra. So some uh, data that has been put out by the Daily Dispatch. They say Hassa Shaman, Medina, and Adenta. Uh, you can find details. Only 5.8% of all 1,610 MPs elected since 1992 are women. So 1,610. 8 percent out of 1,610 uh, are women. So it appears that uh, the men have been close to 96 percent mm -hmm. thereabouts. I mean, at a big Okada debate also on hmm. the front page when two rival MPs agreed on legalization. And Akufado cut sword for solid waste plant in Bono region, also on the front page of the Daily Dispatch. The back page has the EC story. It also has a story about the National Lottery Authority helping the police to arrest four fraudsters in the Volta region. So that is it for the Daily Dispatch. All right, let's do the new publisher newspaper and the punch. No, it's not the punch, it's just punch, but the new publisher. Front page, avoid political chop chop. Utun for raps chiefs. For arrested of a UG Electra murder, uh, Okwe sparks trouble as he chases Afobroni PhD awards and the Lotto fraudsters who will have been grabbed. That story is also in the new publisher. 
uh, but a bit of this one on page six about the Speaker of Parliament. And it says the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, Professor Aaron Michael Quay, has come under public scrutiny and condemnation after he expressed his overwhelming enthusiasm to be decorated with an honorary de uh, doctorate degree by the current leadership of the University of Education, Winneba, at a time the head, VC Professor Afo Broni's legitimacy is challenged, and he himself is lead character in countless controversies, brows, and the accusations of human rights abuses. It's a good summary of what to expect when you get into details of uh, the story. It talks about Yoko's uh, findings against Afo Broni, uh, and then according to the university, Professor Okwe has expressed excitement that he would be decorated with an honorary doctorate degree and has assured that he will travel to the central region for the occasion. Uh, so that's uh, that story there being highlighted in the new publisher. Punch, front page, OD4, Oting, uh, Crunch, the second, donates mass sets to BC pupils. NLA causes arrest of all to fraud says, we finished projects. You are now cutting sorts. MP Jab Sekufuado. So create Safo, incompetent appointees want to be carried like kings. And he said this, it's been a while, but you know, people will definitely milk every bit of what he said on Peace FM. Uh, so details of Socrate Safo's outbursts in the paper punch. Let's get ready for my jawline.com uh, and let's run you through the Daily Statesman as we get ready to do my jawline. The states of the arts solid waste plans for Bono region, discussion on Okada le legislation on resume. Ekufuadu Miteko was leaders on the Mali political crisis tomorrow. Four more for Nana gets massive endorsement. And the custodian, Baumia Commission's third life-saving zipline facility. SHS double track system is brilliant idea, according to Dr. Patrick Iwua, founder and president of Ashesi University. Uh, the Lutu fraudsters are also featured. You are our man for four more years. I have achieved endorse Ekufo Ado. Can we do my journal.com now? The Economy Times, GRA confident of exceeding revenue target amidst COVID-19. 20 out of 24 banks in Ghana paid 1.6 billion as corporate tax in 2019. And stakeholders involved in the consultative process on the proposed amendment to Ghana's Petroleum Revenue Management Act 2015 have unanimously agreed to a proposal that restrictions on transfers from heritage fund should be extended to 25 years from the current 15 years. Myjawline.com, Joseph, you're closer. Let's yes, see. Sir. And so it has the story about Professor Bennett. It says four persons picked up over a medal of UG Law, Professor Yao Bennett. And all the best in your exams is coming from Matthew Poku Prempe to BC candidates. Akufaru to hold. A consultative meeting with ECOWAS leaders on Mali crisis at Pediasi and Methodist Church Ghana mourns Samuel Asante in Chief. And NDC is pursuing God's will to save Ghana. It's coming from Nano Poku Ajiman. And Kennedy Japan ordered to appear before Accra High Court for contempt. And another story here says I lost a bust contract after criticizing government is from A. Plus. And bad roads exposing us to highway robberies. Uh, that story from Mansoor Mim, uh, brought uh, to us by Rastos Asari Donko earlier. And so those are stories that you can find on myjoonline.com. Aha, uh -huh. I missed the story. It's uh, on the front page of the Republic Press. Repentant Ken faces court today as Jane Nano Poku charges judge to reject his plea. I haven't heard the uh, Jane angle. A uh, member well, it was of an parliament. Interesting sound, but you didn't it, hear that story. No, I didn't. Uh, she made reference to the Muntier uh, case and she said that, I mean, when someone scandalizes the court, it's not enough that he just apologize. Just like it's happening in that instance, they actually apologized, but they were punished. And so she said uh, something that, like this, the person should be punished. Mm -hmm. And so, Kennedy Japan is supposed to appear before the court today, we understand. Mm -hmm. 
I listened to the video. Mm -hmm. And the comments. Goodness. That contain the insults. Yeah. Or what the, the judge is not happy about, reason he's appearing before yes, the court. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, very worrying. I mean, and the bravado he exhibits in it, talking about how he's not scared of the judge and that he's taking the judge on. I mean, it's good he's apologized. Uh, let's see what will but happen. But subsequently, we've seen uh, when the news of his appearance came out, we saw, I think, just the following day. Uh, In fact, right was... after the rates had been issued, asking him to appear, mm -hmm. that morning, the, we, the, we came and were in the papers, the apology. Yes, there was a, uh, I, sus I suspect, suspected then, still suspect that it was a, a, a paid for portion in the daily graphic yeah, yeah. with the notice of the apology. And subsequently, he was also on his network again, I guess on the same program, yeah. apologizing. And there's been a series of apologies. Showing a lot of remorse. Yes. But the question that one asks is, this is someone who not long ago uh, was slapped with defamation. The he, cost was awarded the against Kubaku him. The issue. And so, uh, the, yes, the person has shown remorse, which helps in terms of what direction the court should take. But the question the court should be answering is that, is this someone you think is in the, is in the it likes doing that? Or is it someone that you think that, okay, when you pardon him, he's not likely to do that again? If a defamation uh, fine could not even deter him from doing this particular thing, then what happens? And so all those are matters that the courts will be looking at. And obviously, lawyers will be urging the court or not to uh, sanction him. Mm. Let's see how it goes. You're following the story, aren't you? I hope so. It's interesting. <laughs> That's our court correspondent. Trust that he'll bring us the very latest from the court. He's appeared before the high court? Yes, the high court. Mm. The judge is scandalized. Okay. The Muntia three appeared before the Supreme Court. Yes, the Supreme Court. Okay. So this is different in many ways? Yeah, certainly. Mm. We'll see if the many things that he has done in terms of the apologies will calm the judge or not. We'll see. Okay, Joseph Akablay, thank you very much. Oreku is coming with sports. Yes, Oreku is coming with sports. <laughs> uh, right from his office, uh, the view is Amazing. Stay with us. We've got sports coming up next.